Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2014 Winter 2's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. So we've just finished the intro to Problem 7 and we're working on Part 1. Here's a greedy strategy that does not always cause the largest number of cash misses. So this is the strategy we're going to critique, presumably. Each time a data item is not in the cache, so a miss occurs, evict the item that was brought into the cache most recently, and the initial dummy data, data items are going to be evicted in an arbitrary order because they were already they were all brought in at the same time right at the start. Um, so we, we have to evict them first. That's, that's a constraint up here. But once we've gotten rid of those dummy items, um, this is supposed to not give the largest number of cache misses. Um, so since we're giving a small example that shows the strategy can fail, uh, we could try to do it with just one element in the cache, but there's no choices to be made with one element in the cache, so we're not going to be able to show that it does the wrong thing. Well, let's try it with just two elements. So we're going to start with C1 and C2 in the cache, and I'll, I'll just write them across the line here as we do evictions. I'll write in new things. Um, so let's bring in, uh, let's have our data items. This is our data that's requested. So we'll request data item one and we'll evict one. And then we'll request two. And we'd like to evict one. That is the most recently brought in, but we're not allowed to until we clear the cache out. Uh, so now we've got the cache cleared out. Next, we're going to evict two, but we want to make that the wrong choice. So whatever we bring in next, we'll evict two. Evict two for three, and we want to make that uh, the wrong choice to maximize cash misses. So we we actually want to make that the right choice. Uh, so why don't we why don't we have one uh, be the next thing? And so we'll actually get a cash hit at that point, uh, and then two. Uh, and when we get two, we're going to evict the most recently brought in thing, which was three, right? So we'll evict three. And we want to make that the right thing to do. So we'll go back to one. Uh, and then we'll ask for three. And we'll evict the most recently brought in thing, which was two. And we want to make that the right thing. So maybe we can go back to one. Uh, so let's see how that worked out. Did that actually maximize the number of cash misses? Or could we have done better than that? Uh, so one and two, we're going to have cash misses on. There's nothing we can do on that. When we get three, we could have here, let's let's count this. So we did one, two, three, four, five evictions. And let's just do this again and see if we can do worse than that, because we're trying to prove that we can. So we'll do one, two, those are the necessary ones, bringing in one and two. Then we're going to bring in three, uh, but instead of evicting two, I'm going to evict one to bring in three. Then I'll bring in one. And I'm going to be using two fairly soon. So let me evict it and bring in one. And then I'll bring in two. Oh, another eviction. I'm going to be using one soon. So I'm going to evict one to bring in two. One causes another eviction. So I'll evict three to bring in one. Three causes another eviction. So I'll evict one to bring in three, and then one causes another eviction, and it doesn't matter what I evict at that point. But here I've got eight evictions, and over here I've only got five. So this is a counterexample right here. Um, if we want to be really careful about it, n is equal to three, k is equal to two, uh, and how many data items do we have? m, I don't know, count up this list, three, six, eight. There are eight data items. 